Oh my gosh, I am so glad to be home. You like have no idea how happy I am to be home. I am like a kid that just got a Christmas present. I think I've been out for over a month. I was I was trying to remember. I'd have to look on my logbook probably to figure out exactly how long I've been gone, but as soon as I got back to Pensacola, oh my gosh, I was just so thrilled. I, there's just nothing like being home. <sighs> kind of makes me want to retire from trucking, to be quite honest, but I can't do that yet. One of the awesome things about being at home is getting to cook. Oh my gosh, check this out. I am making one of my favorite things in the world. I am a pizza addict. I've always loved pizza. And I have my own little homemade recipe. I kind of cheat. I don't make my own dough or my own sauce, but I'll show you what I do use. It's pretty darn good. I used a pre-made pizza crust. Uh, there's a couple different brands. Um, Mama Mary, I guess. And there's like a Baba Lee, I think is how you pronounce it. There's another shell that I use. These are thin. You can get some of them a little thicker. But I drizzle olive oil around the outside and I put some garlic around the outside of the crust and if you love garlic just throw it all over and for the sauce I use a combination of pizza sauce which this is left over from last night I had a little bit of pasta and uh, salsa so I mix these two together and that is my pizza sauce I'm sorry that's spaghetti sauce not pizza sauce but I make pizza sauce out of the two combined and then I throw on some onions, bell peppers, tomatoes, pineapples, artichoke hearts, banana peppers, green olives, black olives, mushroom, and I have some chicken left over. And I am going to dice that up and use that. And I have four different types of cheese. I use mozzarella, I use a little mix that has some cheddar in it. And Parmesan, I buy the shredded Parmesan. I don't like the stuff that comes in a can. They add fillers to. So I just get the regular Parmesan. It's already shredded, the real stuff. And feta. You can get plain feta. This is really good. It's probably not as good for you because they add stuff to it. So I'm always leery about whenever they start adding and flavoring stuff. But it's got a really good taste. The tomato basil feta. That's really good. So I just kind of drizzle it on. And then I just kind of take a spoon and mix it all together. You could mix it beforehand, I guess, but I've never gone through the trouble. It just takes more time if you put it in a bowl, you mess up a bowl. Something else you got to clean later, so that's not quite enough sauce. I'm going to put a little bit more on there like a little bit more sauce than that all right so that looks pretty good now we're just going to start layering on the toppings Just throw in whatever you want to put on there. I have actually made this for my friends that don't like veggies so much. And I add bacon and pepperoni and whatever you want to put on it. But I am a veggie lover. So I pile it up with veggies. Oh, forgot to wash some mushrooms. Hang on. Okay, we got some mushrooms, some black olives. I'll go ahead and start throwing on some pineapple. I like my pineapple kind of chunky. Um, I don't like a lot of it kind of chunky. I, I think it gives it more flavor. You know, I think that's what I finally figured out one of the reasons why I do not like the pizza 
at the Flying J is because they dice up their veggies so tiny it is ridiculous it really uh, takes away from the flavor to me it's not as good and it might be a little bit too big cut them down a little bit Alrighty, there's that. Okay, and we got some green olives. And to me, the mixture of the green olives and the pineapple, and I'm also going to put banana peppers on there. It's like tangy, sweet and sour kind of mixture. It is so awesome. Okay, and throw some banana peppers on there. artichoke hearts on there which is kind of the little leafy looking things those are really good I just started eating those a few years ago I never ate them before somebody introduced them to me and I absolutely love them okay so we've got the chicken on starting to look really good now is that a loaded pizza or what now the only thing we have left is the cheese Okay, so we got feta. Throw some feta on there. Parmesan. The cheddar mix. And gotta have mozzarella. Got to have the mozzarella for the pizza. It's not a pizza without mozzarella, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to throw it in a 400 degree oven. Mmm, doesn't that look good? You know what? I forgot to spray the pan and it started, it stuck a little bit. But, <laughs> it looks really good anyway. And I only ended up cooking it for about 20 minutes. So, like I said, it's been forever since I cooked one of these. Mm. I couldn't remember how long it takes to cook it. So about 20 minutes at 400. Or if you do lower temperature, cook a little longer. You just got to keep an eye on it and get it to your level of doneness, whatever you prefer. Mmm, good. What do you think? Pretty darn easy, huh? And it is really, really good. <laughs> Try it. You might like it. But I would probably actually cook it at a lower temperature, maybe 350 to 375, and maybe cook it about 30 minutes long. Uh, the longer you cook it, I think it gives it more time for the flavors to kind of meld and uh, come together. And I didn't cook it quite long enough. I can tell it's not as good as it normally is. But like I said, it's been so long since I cooked it, I could not remember. I, my mind goes back to working in the pizza store and they are always really high temperature and short amount of time. But this is a different animal right here. This is something totally different. So you want to probably cook it at a lower temperature and let it cook longer to bring out that flavor. And I bet you tomorrow it'll be even better than it is today. <laughs> Thanks. I hope y'all are having a great weekend. I'll check in with you later.